It's not just about the recipe. It's about how to cook, plan a meal, throw a party. I'm Vicki, and this is Meals and Entertaining for Regular People. Today, I would like to talk about freezing things. Um, I'm a big proponent of cooking ahead, and so I use my freezer quite a bit. A lot of people ask me, what you, can you freeze and what you can't? So I thought we'd talk about those different things. But first, I thought my husband and I, Mick, could do a reenactment of our freezer conversations. Scene one. Oh, <laughs> scene one. I forgot what the scene was. Um, scene one is, what do you think this is? I don't know. I'm not eating that. He eats stuff like this all the time. Okay, scene two. Well, I'll do the churro one now. Honey, can I get this giant box of churros? No. I'll have to call the neighbors, see if they can fit it in their freezer. Scene three, you say. Honey, we need to do something about that freezer. We means me. We have plenty of room. Let me show you. Okay. And lastly, I think that I should have a giant freezer. Honey, can I get a giant freezer for the garage? No. End <laughs> of our, uh, our version of Freezer Wars. Honey, come take a bow. Thank you, thank you for watching. I wonder if it's like that in your house. Freezing foods, I want you to think about what's happening when you freeze the food so that you can make your own decisions on whether you can freeze it or not. Um, there's only one thing I know you're not allowed to freeze, and that is tamales without steaming them first. You're not supposed to do that. I don't know if it reacts, turns into poison, but that's the only thing I know for sure you cannot freeze. So think about this. When you're freezing something, it is becoming ice. You know how, how cold expands and heat contracts. So what's happening is all of the cells are getting filled, being frozen, and then busted. So they're being broken. So it's going to change. It's not going to make the food bad. It's going to change the texture. So a good rule of thumb is to really think about what's going to happen. So rice, I think I'm not a big freezer of rice, although I read you can. And um, potatoes are horrible. So when I'm making a pot pie, I take the potatoes out of the row, you know, wherever I got the leftovers to make my pot pie. I do not include um, potatoes and then I serve the potatoes on the side because they turn into mush. I will freeze a prepared mashed potato sometime, but I literally will have some water on the top of it. And I have to drain the water off the top and then bake it. And it's really good because it was supposed to be creamy anyway. But if you're freezing a potato, that's not good. So I would like to show you a quick little trick that I do when I don't want things to stick together and I have things that I don't want to throw away. My husband is very picky about his blueberries. So he's always throwing blueberries away. So the other day, I go, why are we throwing those away? So I take them out and I spread the fresh, these are frozen, but just show you what they're gonna look like. As I put them just like this in the freezer, you know, I put all them out, I put it on parchment paper, I just stick this in the freezer without covering it and it deep freezes them. So why would I freeze them? Because we know that it's gonna deteriorate when they thaw, is because I can make a pie. I'm gonna do that anyway, I'm gonna cook up you know cook them down a little bit to make a blueberry pie so we always have blueberries and this is really good if people make smoothies and things like that because we don't we're gonna tear up the texture anyway we're not gonna be eating a fresh blueberry like this so I do this with that I make um, I make a beautiful pizza my husband and I make them a little smaller he wants to have these for lunch in five minutes so I thought I better shoot this so I put them literally on this and so then when they're done and they're frozen overnight or whenever they're solid, I can just stack them together and put them in a Ziploc bag. 
and I know it seems kind of simple, but that way I didn't have to put layers in between them and worry about everything sticking to itself. So I call this my little quick freeze method. And um, this I would not be afraid to freeze because what's going to happen is because of the frozen, because it's frozen, it's going to rehydrate itself as it thaws and it'll be super crispy. So when I make these little pizzas, uh, they taste the same. They taste just as good as I originally did it. As long as I didn't, you know, put it fish next to it and leave it in here for three months well six months i leave a lot of things in three months now you see i would use ziplocs a lot i'm trying to suck all the air out of them and i do have a food saver so i'll show you my food saver and the reason why i never use it is because it's pain in the neck someday when i'm rich and i can buy a house with a butler's pantler pantry and put all of my stuff out and leave it plugged in it'll be fine but let me show you how big this thing is. So this is a food saver. You know, I'm the queen of freezing. So you've got this thing, and then you have to take a roll of bags. There are roll of bags in here. You have a roll of bags. You have to seal it. Then you stuff it in, and it cannot have any liquid in it. So if you're marinating... They're good for marinating, but only when you stick this thing with a hose up to a special container and you put the marinade in that and you suck the air out. And that's not something that I want them to do. So you got to seal the end, then you stuff your item in, then you go like this and it makes a ton of noise. And then you'll have something that's beautifully vacuum packed and it will last forever because it doesn't get any ice in it. But guess what? I are contrary to what you saw earlier with my husband, well, we do rotate things out quite a bit. You know, I do freezer inventories and make sure something's not stuck in the back. So anyway, this is a vacuum packer. It's really fun if you're willing to do it and it's extra great. Oh, what? It's like a pain in the neck. And it scares the dog when it makes all that noise. This is good. This is good. This is good video right here, you guys. Okay. So, I want to talk about other things. I, when I make Mexican food, I always make a little extra beans and rice, a little extra meat. So I always buy flour tortillas and turn them into burritos. And you can just see, I just wrapped them up, threw them in the freezer. And these are perfect to take out bean burritos anytime. They're perfect to take out, stick them in the microwave. They're lovely. You can take them out and then put an enchilada sauce over them after they're thawed and bake them in the oven for a wet burrito, a great dinner. Or if it's me, I give it to the neighbor and he eats them for lunch. So you can freeze if you know what's gonna happen. Um, the other things that I freeze, you can freeze dough. So I go to Trader Joe's and buy the, um, I buy the already made pizza dough. And then I just take it out thaw it out for an hour and I have pizza dough. It doesn't really change the texture. So, so my freezer is always full, but it's because of my mantra, if you make one, make two. So when my husband makes spaghetti sauce because he's famous for spaghetti sauce, we make a seven quarts of it. And we just take it out. This one's a big one, so we might be having company. And then we always have it. We always have dinner. If you had to quick thaw this, you could in the sink. You can do that. You can put it in the refrigerator the day before. But I'm always thinking about how are you going to pull dinner out of your behind. You know, so freezing ahead is good for planned meals. And freezing ahead is also amazing for easy dinners. So, for example, I just showed you the little uh, baked ziti that I have. I make a quick salad, stick that in the oven, it's done. So, and I've already went through the trouble of making the baked CD a couple weeks ago when we had it. So see, I'm constantly turning stuff over in the fridge, or the freezer. So I'll show you cooked chicken. I made a beautiful cooked chicken the other day. I have this. This is what it looks like. Nice little chicken, I thaw it out. I'm gonna put it in casserole, I'm gonna put it in a soup. I could do chicken tacos, I could do anything with it. And this is something you can thaw very quickly. Um, another thing that I would do is have a lot of fresh meat. So the other day, this is actually cubes of 
steak or cubes of uh, round steak that I'm gonna make a stew or beef burgundy with. So when I, I you know, it happened to be on sale, so I bought a lot. So, um, th so this is how I constantly have something going. And you might have to make a list of what you have in the freezer. Um, I think I showed you all my good items. Now it's time to eat pizza for lunch. And um, I want you to not be afraid of the freezer. But think about it. You don't know if you can freeze it. What's going to happen to it texturally if you do? So, last thing. I'll do pasta if it's encased in sauce. I will do, I don't do rice and I don't do potatoes. Like, so if I have a stew, if I'm going to freeze half of my stew, I take the potatoes out of it, literally. And then I'll add the potatoes in when I reheat it. So that's what I do. No, no um, tender vegetables. Just hearty vegetables. I have corn that I always do um, because that can stand up to anything. Peas you can freeze. But um, you could take cues from what's available in your freezer area. So uh, I guess that's it. I hope that right. helped. Thanks. What makes you decide to, to use a freezer bag or to do the machine? Uh, laziness. <laughs> the, the freezer bag is always going to let air in. So you'll get, and people get freezer burn, and you just want to cut that off. But, but being frozen and having ice on anything is not bad because that will go away. And that's just because I use a Ziploc, you'll get ice on it if you use Ziploc versus because this you can't get all the good air out of it. So you're going to get naturally some ice on some things. See the frost on the side of this? Um, so that's the difference. Any other question? No, that was good. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, pure laziness. That thing is amazing. And you can actually take those bags and rewash them. You know, you have to reseal them and cut the seal so they'll get smaller. But I just can't haul that thing out all the time. But it is an amazing device. Oh, I just burped. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Please visit my website, mealsandentertaining.com and see my available ebooks. Plus, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to follow me, like me, or love me.